let us prove that in R that is for A comma B belongs to capital R A less than B the closed interval A comma B is a compact compact subset of capital R. So, we will consider this closed interval and we will start with an open cover. So, let so, for is, is a compact subset of R. So, we will prove that if script A is a collection of open set which covers this closed interval A comma B, then from that we can extract a finite sub cover. So, let us start with let script A be a collection of collection of open sets in capital R say that closed interval A comma B is a subset of union of A, A is in script A. Now, this in particular this small A belongs to closed interval A comma B, hence small A will be in at least one of capital A. So, now small a belongs to capital A implies there exist say some say A 1 belongs to script A such that A is in small a belongs to capital 1 capital A 1 and again this A 1 is an open set containing A that means, A is an interior point of A 1 that imply we will get a neighborhood that means, see but we have to restrict. So, this open we can yeah in fact there exists a or this imply A belongs to capital A 1 in fact, A 1 is an open set in the whole space R. In R implies there exist R such that the open interval A minus R, A plus R is completely contained in this A 1. So, we will find a radius R, this is our A plus R 1, this point is A minus R 1, R 1 is positive. So, the whole now we are interested only in the right side of A. So, now take any element in say y belongs to let say y belongs to closed A open A plus R, then closed interval A comma y is a subset of open interval A minus R 
a plus r which is a subset of a 1. So, hence this closed interval is covered by a finite, I mean covered by finitely many members of script A. In that case, just it is covered by one single member of script A. So, then so this portion is covered by a single member of script A. Now, we will consider all those y that is now let us say, say let us say C, let capital C is set of all elements A x is in closed interval A comma B say that in fact, x is not in x not equal to a and a comma x is covered by a finitely many members of script A, meaning is that is x belongs to C if and only if or x belongs to C, this imply there exists a finite sub collection there exists a say finite subset script f subset of script a such that this closed a comma x is a subset of union of a, a is in that sub collection script f. Now, so what is enough to prove is our last this B belongs to C. That means, this closed interval will have a finite sub cover. So, our aim is to prove that that is let us prove that capital this B belongs to script that set C that is aim is to prove B belongs to C. Now, note that for any this set for x belongs to C, if we take x belongs to C that imply x is less than or equal to B. That is B is an upper bound for this imply the element B that is this number is an upper bound for the subset C of R. If a subset C of R as an upper bound, then LUB axiom says it will have a least upper bound. So, we will call that least upper bound as, so let this imply least that least upper bound we call it supremum of C exist, exist means exist and it is finite. So, let us call let this supremum let us let us say say x c small c equal to supremum of set of all x such that x belongs to c. 
Now, what will happen to this C? Note that already C is, we want to prove that C is in, small c is in capital C. Hence, we will have to prove that, that is to prove close interval a comma c is will be covered by this will be covered by a finite subfamily finite subfamily of script A. Now, again consider this line closed interval A comma C. So, naturally will if C equal to B, in fact we are through, we will further see we will here suppose now this set now select epsilon I mean in fact for each epsilon greater than 0 that is we have this for epsilon greater than 0 already this small c is a least among the upper bound that is least. So, hence for epsilon greater than 0 c minus epsilon will not be on upper bound upper bound for C for the set capital C because small c is the least upper bound. So, this is still smaller that than C, C is C minus epsilon is not an upper bound. In fact, C is not equal to A because there are we are seeing that the set C is non empty because for a given A we were able to find Y such that this closed interval A comma Y is covered by a finite subfamily of script A. So, we can assume that epsilon is such that this <coughs> A is strictly less than C minus epsilon. So, then C minus epsilon is not an upper bound for C implies yeah. Ah, it is not an, yeah, this is will not be, sorry, will not be on upper bound. This will not be an upper bound for C implies there exist some x belongs to our set capital C such that this c minus small c minus epsilon is strictly less than see this not an upper bound hence we will get an element say that that element will be greater than this there exists an element say x in c say that x is greater than c minus epsilon. 
in other words that is c minus epsilon is less than x. So, we will have and also c this c minus, so we will get an x belongs to capital C. So, now this belongs to capital C means we will have a finite sub cover for this collection close interval a comma c minus epsilon pardon yeah finite sub cover for a comma x yeah because x is in c so now this set now x belongs to c implies there exists a finite sub collection, finite sub collection say script F naught of script A. So, now again this C is in again C belongs to belongs to close interval A comma B implies there exists C will belongs to say some a 2 for some some a 2 belongs to script a correct c belongs to a 2 again a 2 is a open set that will imply c belongs to now the small c belongs to a 2, A 2 is an open subset of open subset of capital R implies there exist again say R greater than 0 such that such that this open interval c minus r to c plus r is completely contained in this a2 correct a2 so now we have the set A to C minus epsilon is cov covered by a finite sub collection of script A and what about in this yeah again this side. So, the open C minus R. So, so C minus R to C plus R is covered. I mean this open interval C minus R to C plus R is contained in a 2. So, now see here we started with for any epsilon we can find a 
such that c minus epsilon will not be covered by a see we have seen that c minus epsilon for this epsilon we have where x is in c and x is and c minus epsilon is not an upper bound hence is not an upper bound. So, we will have c minus epsilon here x. So, if we c my x is strictly greater than c minus epsilon. So, in particular if we take epsilon equal to r if epsilon equal to r greater than 0, then this closed interval see here, because we have the closed interval a comma x. Now, this epsilon is r, this closed a comma x is covered by a finite subfamily of script a. So, hence in particular a to closed interval c minus r is covered by a finite subfamily of script a and also we have from c minus r to C plus R is subset of A2. So, hence, so here we have this portion is covered by a finitely many members, then C minus R2, in fact, C plus R is covered by one single A1. So, hence, the whole this in particular will imply C is in between c plus r c is in between. So, that will give, so this will imply and that is what if epsilon equal to r greater than 0, then closed interval a comma c minus r correct is covered by a finite sub family finite sub family say script it, see it does not matter if you, you want to use let us say script a prime of script a. Then what this implies closed interval a comma c is a subset of union of A, A belongs to this finite subfamily script F prime, then union that additional member we have denoted by A 2. So, A 2. So, our subfamily is script F prime union singleton A 2. So, hence this is a finite subcover for closed interval a comma c. So, this will imply c small c belongs to capital C. Now, our aim is to prove that this c is nothing but, now let us prove that, now let us prove that in fact, this c in fact, in some sense that is the maximum element having this property. So, now let us prove that the small c equal to b. Suppose not, I mean suppose c is strictly less than 
B. So, we have A, C, B, suppose C is strictly less than B, then again we can use the same method to find a, I mean again this using this, that means what we can find a epsilon, see for example, take epsilon equal to B minus C by 2, which is positive. Then again, suppose C less than B, then take epsilon equal to say B minus C by 2 and for this epsilon, for this epsilon again C minus epsilon is not an, I mean again this C belongs to here. So, that means C belongs to here, yeah we do not care this C belongs to closed interval, C belongs to closed interval A comma B which is a subset of union of A that means C will belongs to one of the member, but that C is yeah just let us say that suppose yeah now we are already yeah as we said we already proved that something right hand side not only just A comma C is covered by this if C is not equal to B then we can go to the right side. So, then suppose C is less then C belongs to say some that is what we denoted by A 2. So, C belongs to A 2 for some A 2 belongs to script A, but this imply there exist or say that open interval C minus R to C plus R is contained in A 2. So, that means, we will get an element C up to C plus R. This element, this set closed A open C plus R or so let us say in particular r by 2 then the closed interval this will be covered by a finite subfamily of script a so this will imply that mean then we can prove that this will give us c plus r by 2 will belongs to capital c so, that will be a contradiction to the fact that C is a least upper bound. So, hence this we can get an uh, positive or if C is not equal to B, hence C should be equal to. So, this will give you a contradiction, a contradiction to the fact that to the fact that C belongs to capital C is an upper bound, I mean is a is the least upper bound for yeah for script that set C. So, this gives us C equal to B and we are through. Hence, Hence, C should block this set B equal to C, which belongs to capital C. This imply there exists a finite subfamily, say script F, such that say that closed interval 
a comma b is a subset of union a, a belongs to script f. So, we started with a open cover for closed interval a comma b, then we have got a finite subfamily of script a, so that that subfamily covers closed interval a comma b. Hence, by our definition closed interval a comma b is a compact subset of R. In fact, one so using real analysis, what we prove that as a metric space R is what is called a complete metric space. That means, if you take a Cauchy sequence, I mean a sequence in R is a Cauchy sequence means just briefly, I mean modulus of x n minus x m tends to 0. That means, that is for epsilon positive, there exists a stage n naught belongs to n such that mod x n minus x m, this is what we call it distance between x n and x m, this is less than epsilon after that stage for all n m come greater than or equal to n naught. Then we say such a sequence as a Cauchy sequence. If every Cauchy sequence converges then it is called complete and also we will introduce a concept called totally bounded that is here geometrically if we see that it is like almost compact. See in this case if we start with A, A less than B, start with an epsilon then consider this what is called totally bounded mean start with any epsilon greater than 0, then there exists a finite epsilon net meaning is this set, there exists x 1, x 2 say x k, it can be from the given set itself, in this case close a b say that close interval a comma b is contained in these intervals union of x i minus epsilon x i plus epsilon i varies from 1 to n. That means, for a given epsilon we can find sorry here we have denoted by n. So, a finitely many member x 1, x 2, x n from that set say that this close a b is covered by this finitely many, these are all neighborhoods of x i. So, if we start with this, so if we start with epsilon then go to a plus epsilon. So, this will cover the portion close a to a plus epsilon. So, in between if we take like this y. So, close interval a minus now a t a plus epsilon this interval we are able to cover. So, uh, that means by taking x 1 equal to a. So, consider this bow open interval for this we have an open interval a equal to x 1. So, x 1 minus epsilon to x 1 plus x epsilon that will take care of this. Now, take x 2 equal to this x a plus epsilon or a plus epsilon is same as x 1 plus epsilon. So, this again consider a ball otherwise interval center at this point and again radius this. So, that will cover up to now this is 
a plus 2 epsilon, then that is our second point. Then the third point again consider a center at this and radius epsilon, then we will go up to a plus 3 epsilon that is x 3, then find n large, n natural number, find n large such that n a plus a plus n times epsilon comes out of b that is greater than b. So, I mean such a thing that is what we want is that is our find a natural number find n belongs to n such that n epsilon is greater than b minus a or n is greater than b minus a by epsilon, which is true by Archimedean principle. So, hence this set will be called totally bounded and that is complete and totally bounded is equivalent to compact in a metric space. Whereas, what we have given is a direct proof using only the definition, namely every open cover in has a finite sub cover. So, now this give will give us I mean many more compact set. Now, we have this closed interval compact we have proved that is Tikhonov's theorem for finite products. So, that is if a 1 comma b 1 compact, a 2 comma b 2 compact. So, if you are in the plane here, this x axis subset of say r, y axis again r I mean we have a set here a 1 or let us say a 2 or a 1 b 1 here some a 2 b 2 then the this is closed interval. So, the closed interval a 1 b 1 Cartesian product this. So, we will get this rectangle. So, that rectangle is closed rectangle is compact with respect to the product topology. So, like that we can have the a, any the product of rectangle or cube in R 3 and so on they are all compact sets. So, yeah. Let us see an equivalent formulation of compact sets, namely, yeah, this is rather very simple, but it has, I mean, many times we will be using this equivalent concept. What mean this is compact if and only if a topological space that is a topological space x tau is compact a topological space x tau is compact let us say it call it theorem is compact if and only if it satisfies the following connection condition namely whenever if and only if whenever script A is a collection of closed subsets of x. Whenever script A is a collection of closed subsets of capital X, 
which has the property that which has finite intersection property, which has finite intersection property, which has finite intersection property that is meaning is this we call it a finite intersection property f i p that is whenever a 1, a 2, a n finitely many members from script a, then that intersection is non empty, that finite intersection meaning this imply a 1 intersection a 2 intersection a n is non empty. Then we say that it has that mean whenever script a is a collection of subset of x which has finite intersection property mean you give whenever a 1 a 2 a n is a finitely many members from script a then that intersection should be non empty. Then we say that script A has finite intersection property, but if it is compact mean if a collection has finite intersection property, then the intersection is non empty. That is what we say here, a topological space is compact if and only if whenever script A is a collection of closed subsets of X which has finite intersection property, then the intersection A, A from script A is non empty. This is just we use the what is called De Morgan law. Script A is a collection of closed subsets, then the complement set of all A complement such that A belongs to script A is a collection of open sets. So, if the intersection is empty, then see what will happen is if the intersection A, A from that is we are asking suppose intersection of A, A from script A, we want to prove that under the given condition this intersection is non empty. Suppose this is empty, then take complement both side that is we have this complement of intersection A, then this will imply De Morgan law is union A complement A is from script A, this empty complement is the whole space. That means, this collection A complement A is in script A, that is this is our collection. Set of all A complement A belongs to script A is an open cover for, then this an open, open cover for capital X. Now, this will have a because X is compact, if you assume X is compact one way. So, now X is compact, X compact implies there X is N belongs to capital N finitely many member A 1, A 2, A n from script A that is our family such that 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 is our sub cover is A 1 complement union A 2 complement union A n complement equal to the whole space. So, again take the complement both side this will imply. So, this complement A 1 complement union A 2 complement 
union a n complement the whole complement equal to capital X complement is empty, but again by De Morgan law this set is nothing but a 1 intersection a 2 intersection a n. This implies a 1 intersection a 2 intersection a n is empty, but what is our assumption is our collection is say that it has finite intersection property meaning is whenever you give any finitely many members like this a 1 a 2 a n from script a then the intersection should be non empty. So, that gives us a contradiction we assume I mean we could get this contradiction, contradiction by assuming that this will is not a I mean this intersection a a from script a is empty. So, hence that should be non empty. So, this will be a very useful criteria to check a space is compact or not. In fact, the celebrated Econoff theorem one can prove using this I mean in compact we will start with a C. What is the will not prove the Tikhonov theorem if x alpha tau alpha alpha belongs to an arbitrary index set need not be finite any arbitrary index set let x alpha tau alpha be a collection of compact topological spaces, then the product space, then the product space phi x alpha, alpha belongs to J with product topology is compact mean whenever we say the product mean unless mentioned otherwise I mean it with product topology. This is compact what we can do is one can use what is called Jones lemma that mean we will have a force we have a collection we start with a collection of subsets we can use if script A is a collection of subsets of the product space, then ultimately we want to prove that if we start with a collection of closed sets. So, that is equivalent to again whenever it is a collection of sets which has finite intersection property, then x is compact mean in fact x is compact if and only if whenever script A is a collection of subsets of x which has finite intersection property then the intersection a closer a in script a is non empty. So, we will start with a to mean just what is an outline quickly we will start with a collection of a collection of subsets of the product space phi x alpha, then we will use Jones lemma that means, we will find a new collection script A naught which is larger than script A and this has the property that <coughs> it is closed under finite intersection that meaning is whenever a 1 a 2 a n belongs to script A naught implies a 1 intersection a 2 intersection a n also belongs to 
that collection correct and second if for a subset if for a subset of the product space subset of the product space a subset okay the product space we call it phi x alpha and a intersect every member of every member of script a not then a is say that a intersection b non empty for all b belongs to script a not then that will imply that B also belongs to yeah sorry we are using A yeah A also belongs to script A not. So, then we will use this collection yeah to prove that such a collection will have finite intersection property and that intersection is non empty using that we can prove the given collection intersection a a in script a is non empty yeah thank you